yeah, we've got some decent fights to look forward to. We have. They're they're, they're looking good, and uh, first one obviously with the heavyweights on Saturday. Um, you know, Joe's got his hands full with Michael Wallach. He's had 23 fights. Joe's had 10. He's got a wealth of experience. He's been with good fighters, um, and. And Joe's got to be top of his game. He's been out a while, so he's got to get the cobwebs and the rust off. And uh, he comes for it, then we'll all be sitting on the edge of our seats waiting for the 29th of August for Daniel with his opponent against his opponent, Eric Pfeiffer, who again is a quality operator. You know, two, fought in two Olympic Games, he's undefeated WBO European champion. So these are, these are tough fights for him. Yeah, I sort of, um, I mean, like, like you say, um, Joyce's opponent, you know, good experience, uh, good campaigner, but the, uh, Pfeiffer, I mean, I just thought that, that's, that's quite, a, it's quite a tough task for Daniel. Yeah. It is, but, you know, we've got confidence in, in both the guys. Uh, but anything can happen in, in, in boxing, anything can happen in heavyweight boxing. We've seen, I hate to keep saying it, we've seen all these upsets over the years. There's been quite a few of them, I mean, you know, when there were going to be some seriously big fights made, and there's no doubt about it. You know, uh, Daniel against Joe is the, is the biggest domestic heavyweight fight out there other than Tyson and uh, Mr. Joshua. But it's, a, you know, this, this could be a spanner in the works. And these guys have got everything to go for. Yeah. Assuming, though, they do come through that. And we fast forward to, fingers crossed, October. Yeah. Uh, in front of some actual fans. I hope so. I hope so. Well, we were nigh on sold out last, you know, before it got cancelled in, uh, or postponed, I should say, in October. So we, we, you know, we, we, we it was never, never, uh, never a problem selling the tickets. It was captured the public's imagination. There's no doubt about that. I mean, unfortunately, we were all caught up in this pandemic, and, and that was a casualty of it. And this is a risk I'd prefer not to be taking with the two guys, I, you know, it's a shame we just can't go straight to the fight, but we need the live audience to make it work. Yeah, no, quite. I, I think with, with, with Joyce, I mean, as, as John pointed out, 35th birthday coming up, time's not really on his side, so he needs to go in for these big fights now, doesn't he? Yeah, but he started late, didn't he, as a, as a, as a fighter, and uh, he's in good nick, and he's, <laughs> he's, you know, it's not like he's not a quality operator, silver medal medalist in the Olympic Games, he should have won the gold, I thought he, I thought he got, you know, he could have nicked that, um, but and he's undefeated as a pro, and he's been in with some good fighters, sparred with everybody. Being, you know, so he's a very, very, very experienced guy. I don't think the age is going to be against him at all. Not at this stage of the game, anyway. Okay, but for Daniel's point of view, the lockdown might have suited him a bit better. I mean, like Joyce has been out for what for the best part of the year. Hasn't he? Yeah, well, Daniel's nearly ten months. Mm. The time he comes into August, you know, he did, when he fought in December, so it's uh, yeah, nine and nine and a half months. So uh, it is what it is. And they're going to have to get the rust, ring rust off. That's why they're having these fights. They've got to get that rust out to get the best out of them. And like you say, Joyce, a quality operator. I mean, this really is going to be the toughest test for Daniel so far, isn't it? Toughest test, I think, for Daniel. And it's a tough test for Joe. And how do we see the fight going? It's no secret who you want to win. Well, you know, you know we've made it very clear. I mean, you know, Sam and I are at loggerheads over it, but it is what it, Sam Jones, the man, ma, um, Joe's manager, but it is what it is. Um, I, I was saying earlier, you know, this is a fight, where, these two fights they've got coming up, they're going to actually be cheering each other on. You'd never thought it'd come to that, but it's what, they're, yeah, they both want each other to win. Um, these are tough, they're, they're tough, they're tough fights to get into an even tougher fight. But one thing about it, whoever comes through at the end of it is going to be I think up there being probably the number one challenger by next year for the world title. I was going to say, the winner, um, as far as you're concerned, you want it to be... <laughs> Sam's just here beginning the corner there. You want it to be Daniel. But whoever wins this fight, they've got to be knocking on the door for a world title. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I think the winner, the winner of these, these fights, whoever comes through, will be the number one challenger. OK, and if Daniel does come through, how many fights do you think he needs before he can go up that extra level to come on with the big boys? Well, it's not what he need, how many fights he needs, it's when it becomes available at the moment because of all what's going on. The guys are all the guys are all locked up for this year. They've got, um, AJ's got Pulev and obviously uh, Tyson's got another commitment against Wilder. Then next year we're hoping to get them on and they'll want to, they'll want to rematch. So they've just got to keep them busy, just going to have to keep them busy. And you've got poor old Dillian White, he's been waiting about 15 years for his shots. Well, he's been waiting, but, you know, he's 
I'll keep telling him, he's got to look in the mirror because that's who he's got to blame for that. Okay. Embellish that on that a bit more? Well, he made choices, didn't he? You know, if you look at Tyson, Tyson had been out of the ring for three and a half years, came back within six months and we got him in a world title shot. He's been sitting there as a sort of bridesmaid. He's not even managed to catch the bouquet yet. He's been sitting there as a bridesmaid waiting for it to happen. It's just not happened yet for him. Um, so do you think um, in, in Daniel or, or Joe's um, case that should they, whoever comes through their fight, then they're going to be, they'll get their chance to loss? I think they'll get their chance. And if in the meantime, all these guys are all locked up, then uh, Dillian White can fight one of them. How do you think he'd get on? With who? Either of them. I think he'll have his hands full. I really do think he'll have his hands full. I, you know, I fancy my man against all of them. Absolutely. Um, so you mentioned Wilder Fury. That's well, we've heard lots of different things, times, dates, places. And what's the latest on it's that? It's the same. It was the last time I spoke. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. That's, there's nothing at the moment. All sorts of things. All you know. Keep hearing rumours and stories, but nothing at the moment. Okay, but there's been. Vegas has been mentioned, I think Australia I saw mentioned. Yeah, sounds like a good world trip we're going to have. <laughs> it's nothing, honestly, it's nothing. Okay, and Tyson himself, you spoke to him lately, how's he been? I spoke to him, he's in, been in Marbella, uh, looking up the opposition. <laughs> is he in good spirit? Is he, is he raring Yeah, to go? I'm really, I was a bit concerned, but he's, he's really been good and he's handled it really well. And uh, I mean, we've seen him with his fitness video every day that he's doing and he's kept, he's been training really hard. He's, he, he could probably fight in a month. And a lot of people saying uh, Wilder Fury, why is that happening? You should get, get straight onto the main course. Because they're contracted. Once you sign contracts, that's what you're in for. And do you think, um, having seen the way Tyson fought the last time, which nobody apart from you maybe was expecting, like a bull out of the gate, um, do you think uh, Wilder will change his game plan? Do you think he's got a chance? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what else he can. He's never going to box outbox Tyson. And I think Tyson's taken his best shots. And I think Tyson. You know, Tyson's got his number all day long. And but then, he's a puncher. You know, he's a big puncher, as we've seen. But as I say, Tyson took those shots. And then Tyson gets through that. And AJ, that's, that's uh, what's been moved to. Any, any uh, more on that? No, nothing at all. Nothing at all. Obviously no. a fight you'd like to see. Oh, I'd that. love to see. I'd love to see that right now. I mean, that's, what we, that's what we really want, isn't it? You know, see the best fighting the best. That's the fight all the fans want to see. But um, we are where we are at the moment. And if and when that does happen, you're backing your man? Of course I'm backing him. <laughs> 100%. I think he, he's the best heavyweight out there, there's no doubt about that. And I think that Daniel's the best young young heavyweight coming through. So who would you be your one, two, three in the heavyweight division at the moment? Well, at the moment, Tyson, AJ, and probably Usyk. And where would Daniel figure in that? I think he's in the top six of them. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, I know in another interview he said that he'd be happy to fight Wilder further down the line. Down down. Do you think that's a fight that can happen? Yeah, well, why not? Why not? And why how not? do you think that would go? Do you think Daniel would be ready for something like that? I, I think Daniel, we're, we're going to see, aren't we? We're going to see at the end of the month and then in October and then, we're, that, then we'll know whether he's ready or not. I think he's ready, but we'll see. But, he can, but every, every fight he has gets invaluable experience. And that's really what's important with him. But he's a, you know, he's a very competent, very competent, and more importantly, very confident young man. Who still, you know, he just feels it's his destiny to do it. Yeah, I mean, this one, every train, every promoter, every fighter thinks they're going to be world champion. What's the difference between thinking it and actually doing it? Why is he more special than some of the other guys? Um, he's just got that thing about him. I don't know what it is. I suppose it, when you're in the, you know, when you've been in the business a long time, you get that that vibe from him. But he just. You know, he, he's not a braggart, he doesn't boast, he's not one of these, he doesn't, you know, he's not craving for attention, he doesn't do any of that. He, all he does is does he, he does his business in the ring and he's been doing it on a regular basis. Every opponent, that's what's going to happen, that old bell's going to toll for him as they come in. <laughs> and one other boy we've been speaking to, another one of your fellas, who's also confident that he can beat all of them, including Daniel, is David Adelaide. He looks one... One for the future. Well, he's looking. A, he's looking a good young young fighter. He's only had two fights. He's got a long way to go yet, but he's a man in a hurry. And uh, what he's done up to now, he's done really well. But he's, again, he's got that. He's got that um, confidence about him. He wants it, and he's been, you know, he was in the world champion sparring sparring partner for Tyson, helping him prepare for that fight. That's great experience. That's like having five fights. 
OK, let's move on to another couple of other guys before we let you go. Carl Frampton, he's going to be back soon. Do we know any more about the where and the when for that? Yeah, right, that fight will take place on the 15th of August. And he'll be coming back, fighting on, uh, uh, in London. So that'll be on. Mick Conlon will be on the bill. And uh, Michael Collins, you say. And as will um, Archie Sharp. And we've got opponents for those guys yet, or still working on that? We're, we're sorting on that out now. And obviously Jamel Herring, I mean, that was going to be happening. But well, Jamel Herring's supposed to have had a fight, that's why he's got his fight. But Jamel Herring tested positive for COVID. And now, um, you know, obviously Carl's been out the ring as well. He's got to get, get the rust out of his system, and hopefully they'll get it on in October. Okay, and just before we go, Anthony Yard, any, any word on him yet? I'm um, speaking with him, um, speaking with Tundi and Anthony in the next couple of days. Uh, he's, he wants to fight in October and he wants to fight um, Lyndon then. He's got it and he said that's what he wants. So that's where we are. If he wants to fight before, it's not a problem. And again, with that one, win that, you think they've been knocking on the door. Anthony's already been there, of course, in Russia, took him on in Well, his he's, he's had valuable experience, hasn't he? He's had a value, you know, couldn't have been an, any greater experience than that. And he was very unlucky. So, um, you know, he's, as you say, he's knocking on the door. He's got to get back himself back into it. But that's a good domestic bust up, him and Lyndon after. I mean, it's one that we all want to see. And I think it's going to be, a, you know, the winner of that will probably go on and fight for a long time. And one more name, Liam Williams. Um, he looks a business to me. He, uh, he's looked very comfortable at the weight, and I think that's great for him. He's, he's uh, very settled with his, in his training camp. He's enjoying himself. Um, Andrade and him will probably go out to Perth bit soon, but because of the game, because of the pandemic, it all got postponed. So we'll, we'll sort that out, I hope, within the next uh, few weeks or so. Brilliant. Well, it looks like it's going to be, after a troubling few months, it looks like we're finally back on track. Well, well hopefully we're back in the game again. And uh, well, We had a good show, didn't we? We had a good show in the studio a couple of weeks ago. And, and I've got to say, something I want to mention is, Brad Foster... It's all gone under radar about him. He never had any amateur fights. He's won. He didn't just win the. He didn't fight and win the title. He won a Lonsdale belt and the Commonwealth title. And he fifteenth fight. That's a bit of a, bit of a feat that he did. There. Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot more of him. I hope so.